guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about exam day tips for the American Health Information Management Association Medical Coding Certification Exams, the CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist, the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, or the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Based. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, so first things first, I will say this first. Anytime I do one of these videos that's specifically about a HEMA or specifically about AAPC, I always get the question, well, what about AAPC? And I'm curious about the CPC exam. Okay, uh, but I will do that on a separate video. There's a lot of things that I wanna cover today with the AHEMA exams. So AHEMA gets a whole episode all by itself today. So please don't ask because I will do it on another episode for AAPC, okay? so. With that said, I did get this question um, that kind of sparked today's episode. The thing that I want to caution a lot of you on today, first and foremost, is not getting worked up about the minor details. The minor details that at the end of the day really don't matter, but it's cluttering up too much mind space uh, in order to really prepare yourself for these exams. Now, whether you are taking the CCS, CCA, or the CCSP, the thing that you have to know is this. These medical coding certification exams are very rigorous. They are some of the best medical coding certification certifications that you can have in the industry because of the rigorousness of these exams. Now, the CCSP and the CCS both have gotten a facelift, and I will go into that here in a minute. But let me uh, read to this message that I got and then we're going to get into it. So here we go. So the person says, and this is what I mean about getting sucked into the things that really don't matter. Okay. The, the comment says, uh, I'm studying for the CCS currently and taking every little bit of little and big advice you have given. I will be reaching out near the end of my study journey to ask for tutoring just to make sure that there are no gaps in my understanding slash knowledge. I have possibly an unusual question. You should never qualify your question like that. Ask the question, okay? Just ask the question. Don't say this is a silly question, this is an unusual question, uh, you know, whatever. Don't qualify your questions, just ask them, okay? It's very important to get into that habit now because you have to be very confident in what you're doing as a medical coder and it begins in the language that you are using, all right? So I've used, I'm used to a paper-based exam, plenty of room for my books. Because I will be sitting for a computer computerized exam, I'm wondering if I should get in the habit of balancing my books on my lap when in use. I'm just not sure how much room Pearson View grants for our books in the surrounding area of the computer. I hope this isn't a silly question. Again, don't ever qualify your question with silly or stupid or any of those things. Don't ever do that, okay? Get more into the habit of being very confident when you're asking a question, all right? Now, the other side of this is, again, this is something that is so small. We don't know what the size area is for every single Pearson View Center. We don't, because the size difference between when I first took my CCA exam way back in the day, <laughs> in 2008, um, those desks look different, okay? From now, when I took my uh, CCSP and my CCS, I took my CCSP and I took the CCS at the same testing center, and it's fine, but I was of course in different desks and it's just all the same. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't, but the size difference between those two, it was different, all right? So every Pearson View Testing Center is gonna have a different sort of setup, um, but don't get sucked into something so small like that. That is a small thing. If you are really concentrating on where you should be, which is making sure above all else that you are working on your speed when it comes to looking up codes in the book. Now, I say this because, of course, these are timed exams 
And I have heard from many people <laughs> who have told me, Blue, I went and took my test today and I failed because I freaked out and I couldn't remember which book I needed to look at. That's somebody who's not practicing enough. That's somebody who is not thinking about the things that they're supposed to be, which is how fast can I get through these books? The more I practice, the better off I will be. Instead of worrying about something like, should I get into the habit of stacking my books on my lap? This is not something that you should be even thinking about right now. You need to be thinking about how many hours of study am I going to be able to get in before I take my test? Can I get to the 20 hours per week? And a lot of people will be like, oh no, and they'll, they'll send me emails hyperventilating telling me all the reasons why they can't. All that time you're wasting with why you can't get to 20 hours, which it is possible. You do three and a half hours per day for five days, that's 17 and a half hours. And then all you have is two and a half hours on the weekend. And you tell me that's not possible? Oh, trust me. <laughs> you got time for Tiki Talk. You got time for Facebook and, and LinkedIn and all these things. You've got time to study. Okay, you got those three and a half hours you can do per day. It is, if it's that important to you, you will make the time. Okay, so let's not worry about these little things like this. Let's worry about, let's focus on, not worry, but focus on, on getting through and being comfortable with the books. Now, if your books are cluttered up with these ridiculous tabs, I will tell you that the candidate hand guide specifically says for the AHIMA exams, that homemade tabs are not allowed. If the tabs came with the book, you can use those tabs. Um, like the, uh, the CPT manual does have its own tabs. I've done a video about that. I didn't like doing the video, but I did it because so many people ask me to do it. And then I get, I can't believe you did that video, Blue. Well, y'all asked and I gave it to you, okay? I say that you don't need these tabs. These tabs, do, um, these books do not need to be written in because doctors and scholars write these books. And if you're using the books and practicing like you're supposed to, you will not have an issue with using a clean book because a clean book is a heck of a lot better than a cluttered book. I've seen so many cluttered books. It's ridiculous the amount of highlighting and writing that you can't even see the, the words itself on the paper. I mean, on the, on the pages of the book. And keep this in mind as well. Pearson View will uh, inspect your books. And when they inspect your books, if they deem that you have written too many things in this book, they can forbid you to go in and you can, you'd have to forfeit your exam fee. So it's just something to think about, guys. All right. I don't care what Sue, Jane, and Sally says. And, oh, no, that's not true. And that, my Pearson View, I don't want to hear it. Okay, I don't. Because I would rather be safe than sorry. And this is actually on the AHIMA website. And again, if you're practicing, you can't go wrong, right? Because you're going to already know how to look up the codes and where to find things. You're not going to have time to read those notes either, okay? Just something got to tell you. All right. So for the CCS exam, there used to be a range of questions. And just so everybody knows... The CCS and the CCSP are both in the beta period right now, which means that there's not immediate scoring. Sometimes when it's not in a, uh, not sometimes, but when they are not in a beta period, uh, which means that there's been sufficient number of people who have taken the exam, they will have immediate scoring, meaning as soon as you get done with your test and you walk out, they will have a printout of your score and you know the breakdown of the domains and how did you do in each domain right now because it's still saying that it is in beta period this means that these are brand new tests so they have to wait for uh, a certain number of people nationwide to have taken the exam and then they will release the scores okay so until that time you know we just have to wait and sometimes it's it's a little bit, it's a few weeks, uh, and sometimes it's really fast. So it really all depends. They're still showing that it is in beta period and we're at the end of the month, we're at the 29th, um, that I'm filming this May 29th. Uh, but because of that, you know, I mean, it could be like immediate scoring whenever you go, okay? So it really all depends. But the website will tell you uh, where they are. Now, 
The other thing that I noticed uh, about these tests is the CCS and the CCSP no longer have a range of questions. Before, it used to be they would say that these tests have between 115 and 140 items. So you didn't know how many items you were going to have on that test. <laughs> so that's where it was just like kind of scary because you didn't know how many items you were going to have. Now it says that here, according to the website, the CCS is a timed exam. Candidates have four hours to complete the exam. The total number of questions on the exam is 107. There are 97 scored items and 10 pretest items. So the pretest items are mixed throughout the exam, right? The exam consists of two sections, a multiple choice section and a medical scenario section, inpatient, outpatient, and emergency department that contains multiple choice, multiple response items. The exam is given in computer-based format. AHEMA exams contain a variety of questions or item types that require you to use your skills, knowledge, knowledge skills, and or experience to select the best answer. Each exam includes scored questions and pretest questions, pre -test questions randomly distributed throughout the exam. Pre-test questions are not counted to the final results. So now it's a 107 questions total, and there are 97 uh, uh, scored in 10 pre-test. The passing score for the CCS is a 300. The competencies for the CCS fall into four domains. Each domain accounts for a specific percentage of the total questions on the certification exam. And then it says, see the exam outline below for greater detail. The 2024 content on, uh, outline effective on May 1st competencies fall into five domains. So now it is five domains, but still um, the, let's see, what the, is it going to give it to me? Um, the exam outline, okay, for 2024. Now this one says the, the majority of it is still, the bulk of this test is still your coding knowledge and skills, okay? Domain one is coding knowledge and skill, 39 to 41%. It used to be 51% uh, of the exam, right? Uh, but now it's 39 to 41%. The coding documentation is 18 to 22%. Provider queries is nine to 11% of the exam. Uh, domain four is regulatory compliance. This is a heavy hitter. The other heavy hitter is 18 to 22 percent. And domain five is information technologies, which is 9 to 11 percent. The medical scenarios inpatient is 33.3 percent, outpatient is 33.3 percent, and emergency department is 33.3 percent. So they went <laughs> and even split all the way through for those. Now that's that's the other thing. This uh, outline of the of the exam will tell you what subjects are covered on here, like um, hospital acquired conditions, and then UHDDS, and you have all of these things, HIPAA, and those kinds of things on this exam. And then, of course, it's going to go over like provider queries and coding documentation, and coding knowledge and skills. Going to talk about uh, present on admission, those guidelines, and then uh, MCCs and uh, CCs. So these are the subjects that you need to be focused on if you don't really kind of understand those things. Uh, please don't ask about like specific resources for that because there, there's plenty that you can find on Google that are going to be the latest and greatest and most up to date uh, when it comes to those things. Part of being a medical coder is being resourceful and knowing how to do your research. Research is so easy uh, because of Google. Okay. It is very easy because of Google. So anything that you are curious about, what, you know, where can you find resources? Just let your fingers do the walking. Okay. Present on admission guidelines. And you'll see a lot of papers come up about that. Um, anything about uh, DRGs and APCs, if you're confused about that, that's something else that you can easily put into Google and find a bunch of those resources. I have recommended before going to the CMS website, cms.gov. There's plenty of questions and answers there uh, on the website. They have like frequently asked questions and things. 
uh, and covering a variety of topics. And I get the, oh, Blue, it's, it's so, like, overwhelming. It's not. Just take your time with it. Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to build your knowledge about medical coding overnight. As long as you are practicing faithfully um, your coding, practice your coding. You're practicing your coding. You're going to be halfway there, right, with what you got to know. The rest of it is what you're going to be doing, okay? Now, the other one for the CCSP, uh, let's see here. All right. So they are in a beta period. The CCSP stands for the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Based. This is entirely outpatient coding on this exam. The CCS is inpatient and outpatient coding. Now, the CCSP is a timed exam. Candidates have four hours to complete the exam. The total number of questions on this exam is 121. So there's a little bit more <laughs> questions on this one compared to the CCS. Uh, there are 97 um, scored items and 24 pre-test items. The exam consists of two sections, a multiple choice section and a medical scenario section, evaluation and management, surgery and medicine, and contains multiple choice, multiple response items. The exam is given in computer-based format. AHIMA exams contain a variety of questions or item types that require you to use your knowledge, skills, and or experience to select the best answer. Each exam uh, includes scored questions and pre-test questions randomly th distributed throughout the exam. Pre-test questions are not counted towards the final results. The passive score for the CCSP is set at 300, as are all AHIMA exams and programs. Competencies for the CCSP fall into five domains. Each domain has a specific percentage of the total questions on the exam. See the exam outline for greater detail. So the CCSP outline is the domain one is the diagnosis coding is 24 to 26 percent. Domain two procedure coding like your CPT and your Higgs picks is uh, 28 to 32 percent. Research is six to 10 percent. Compliance is the other heavy hitter at 18 to 22 percent. Um, and then it's talking about revenue cycle is domain five, and that is 14 to 18% of the exam. The medical scenarios all at 33.3% evaluation and management, surgery and medicine. So there's a variety there of things. And again, it is very easy to find resources to help you study for the other parts of, you know, the coding that you need to know and for the other parts of the the other domains for like compliance for OIG, CMS, and uh, LCD, and CPT, and ABNs, and HIPAA, <laughs> and all these things. So all of these are just, you know, let your fingers do the walking in Google, and you'll be able to find those. Now, if you're a little nervous about evaluation and management, don't be. A lot of times people have a preconceived notion that um, evaluation and management is hard, and it's so difficult, and it's so confusing. No, it's not. A lot of people make it scary and it's not. All you have to do is think about the doctor's cognitive work. That's basically what all evaluation and management comes down to. And it also comes down to understanding the, you know, your table of risk and all of these things and understanding what each one of these elements are when you put them all together. And so that's the whole thing about evaluation and management. It is not scary. And I will always say that. And for those of you who, you know, still are confused with it, I have done episodes where I've talked about like resources to help you learn evaluation and management on my Patreon channel. I do put up evaluation and management exercises. I've been doing those a little bit more lately, um, but that's just something that you have to take the time to practice with and really start to look at and understand these notes. But I will always go back to, if you have not been practicing looking up diagnosis codes by themselves, looking up procedure codes by themselves, it is going to be very difficult for you when you start to get into these big notes, not just op notes, but like uh, encounter notes and looking at all the information if you can't spot the diagnoses, if you can't spot the procedures, it's going to make it very difficult for you. 
So that's why I say you got to practice on those things. The books I recommend are always in the description box, guys. They're always there. Now, finally, <laughs> um, there's the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, which is not currently in, well, it says the retest waiting period for this exam has now been reduced to 30 days. Okay, I got to do it a separate episode about that, about the, um, about the retesting, you know, and how soon you should go back and things like that. I personally do not believe in the 30, like going in in 30 days to retake your test. Even though you say, well, Blue, I only missed it by a couple of points. You have to keep something else in mind, guys. These exams are different every time you go in there. You're not going to have the same exact exam. So even though you may have barely failed by a few points um, on your previous attempt, it does not mean that you're going to be ready for your next attempt. So again, I will have to cover the, that, <laughs> the retest thing in another episode. But finally, for the CCA, so the CCA is not in a beta period, um, but the CCA does cover inpatient and outpatient coding. So the CCA is a timed-based exam. Candidates have two hours to complete the exam. So just keep that in mind, it's two, only two hours. The total number of questions on this exam is 105. There are 90 scored items and 15 pre, excuse me, pre-test items. The exam is given in computer-based format. And then it talks about the passing score is 300. The competencies for the CCA falls into six domains. So they have some of the most domains of all of the uh, medical coding certification exams. So let's see what the uh, outline looks like. So clinical classification systems is domain one. It is 30 to 34 percent of the exam. Reimbursement methodologies is domain two at 21 to 25 percent of the exam. Domain three is health records and data content, 13 to 17 percent. Domain four is compliance, 12 to 16 percent. Domain five is information technologies, six to 10%. And domain six covers confidentiality and privacy at six to 10%. So again, um, these are gonna be a, a good mix of a lot of different subjects. That's what's so great about the CCA is that they have a variety um, because they cover a lot of things. This says that you have the entry level knowledge and that's what a lot of people miss out on, especially if they're not paying attention to the description of the of this uh, certification. A lot of people say see that entry level description on it and immediately want to dismiss uh, the CCA and saying, oh, well, it's an apprentice. It's not. Again, showing ignorance because CCA is not an apprentice. <laughs> it's an associate, certified coding associate. That's what it is. The other thing about it is, when it comes to the CCA, it's a very tough exam to pass. It's not easy, all right? And because it's covering so many different subjects. And that's the thing that you have to understand. These people are gonna be, who have the CCA, are gonna be ready for anything, whether it is inpatient or outpatient. Uh, so that's something that you, know, you have to know. And um, the other thing is, when it comes to this test, um, knowing how to navigate in your ICD-10-CM, your CPT, and your ICD-10-PCS is where, was where it's at. You know, you have to know how to get through those books very quickly. So practice, practice, practice. And when you go to the Pearson View Testing Center, remember that you cannot have any jewelry, you cannot have any belts, you cannot have any of those things when you are in that exam room. You can only have your books. All right. So uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, best of luck to you on your exam. If this video helped you, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.